Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and today I wanted to go ahead and talk about Path of Exile 4.0 or sorry Path of Exile 2.0 uh, along with some of the details that kind of encompass it uh, and then we'll talk about 3.9 in another video. So with that being said let's check out the official trailer. The gods are dead but left on their own. Men will always seek to take their place. Criminal! Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until death. Let your souls be the first ones, and your bodies be the land. The only result is pain and death. I have to say I've seen this already, but this is by far the coolest fucking character selection screen I've ever seen in my life. I don't really care much for Diablo 4 and don't think I ever will because I think that even GGG's cinematic trailers are looking pretty sick now. Like you can even hear the water, it's so perfect. Outstanding job. New Hillock fight. I think as well, I could be wrong here, but this actually looks like your character zoom has been further pushed out. Like you can actually zoom out more, maybe? Only 20 years since Kitaba fell, and already corruption spreads like a plague through these shattered lands. Wretched malevolence lurks in the shadows. This actually, though, is interesting because this kind of looks very much like Diablo 3 to me. I'm not really... It's not like a bad thing. I didn't really mind the Diablo 3, like... I wouldn't say it's cartoony, but it's kind of like... Part of it looks... I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a polished look or a cartoony look, but like this inside area kind of looks... Not the monsters, but just kind of like this area. Does that like sort of make sense? It is our calling to put it to an end. Like, none of this does. This looks more like Diablo 2-esque slash regular Path of Exile. It must be done. If Rayclaus is to survive. That's, that's, oh, we gotta go back, sorry. Look at how smooth it looks. Come on, that's so, that's, that's so cool. Then there's the whole fact that PoE2 is going to be uh, a separate story, I think an optional uh, separate storyline. Maybe I, I haven't looked too much into this where basically um, the new storyline is going to be, I think, have another way of acquiring the new 19 ascendancies that are going to be coming out as well. One game, two campaigns. Yeah, okay, perfect. Let's go check out the Path of Exile 2 gameplay preview. I don't know if we're gonna talk, like watch the whole thing, but let's see. Graveyard, you're gonna notice the massive. Oop. So today we're going to do a short demo of some of the content we have in this build of Path of Exile 2. We're starting here at about level 11, which is around halfway through Act 1. I also want to state that the content that they're showing is content that they have time to polish for like one plus year, which is really exciting. Right away as Jonathan plays with the graveyard, you're going to notice the massive improvements we've made to the Path of Exile engine since 3.0 was released. Environments, characters, and items all use physically based rendering, which gives the whole game a realistic look. We have new main character class models with all new animations and completely new item based types. Most of these are physics for many of the little details, which makes them a lot more awesome. That 
That split arrow looks so cool. I don't know why. Let me see. Can I... Oh, it looks like normal arrows, but they just look so clean. put a lot of work into updating the skill effects throughout Path of Exile. For example, when you fire a split arrow, you really feel the individual arrows because some stick in the walls and others bounce off realistically. That's probably what it is then. The 4.0 campaign contains a variety of optional side quests that lead to meaningful boss encounters along the way. Very soon we're going to encounter Lockwood, an NPC who has lost his family. The game has changed a lot more than just visually, though. One of the things we have wanted to do for a really long time is to make fundamental changes to Path of Exile's skill system. The skill system in PoE is really cool and versatile. Personally, it's my favorite thing about the game, but there have always been some awkward things about it. We really wanted to find a way to address all of the shortcomings while not sacrificing even a single bit of the functionality that we already have. When you see the inventory here, you will notice something missing. All of the sockets on the items. This is because in Path of Exile 2, you no longer put gems into your items. Instead, the skill gems themselves have sockets, as you can see here, and there is a dedicated screen for socketing them. This is probably one of the coolest things that I've heard. Uh, and the main reason why I say this is because when you're leveling, one of the biggest hassles in Path of Exile and making a new character is having to always constantly reshuffle your gear around and not be able, like, like for example, you find an armor piece, but you're a caster. You can't really use it if your links were in your gloves because you'd have to four off color your gloves if that was the thing that was linked. So this actually makes it cool because when you see an upgrade, it's much more easily accessible now to actually use that upgrade without having to change the colors around, refuse it, link it, etc. So this is a huge step in the right direction, not only for people who are constantly playing, but like new players coming in and trying to understand the system, it makes a lot more sense, in my opinion. Jonathan's going to change his split arrow skill for Ice Shot and we'll add some support gems to it. There are some really big advantages here. For one, every single item in Path of Exile 2 could be a six link. This is going to cause huge changes and help players design character builds. In the past, players didn't ever want to have more than one primary attack skill because they could only have one or two six links on a character at most. Now, it's totally viable to have multiple powerful primary attacks. The thing I'm really happy about though, is you don't have to screw around with your gems all the time when you're changing items. Check out this bow here. The socket colors you get still come from your items, but now every single bow that drops will have exactly four green sockets. This means that we can swap this bow for this other one we have found, and we don't have to mess around with our gems. As we swap between the bows, we can see at a glance all the DPS values for our skills update. Yeah, that's really nice. It's still possible to fine-tune socket colors on items when you need to, but because everything that drops has fixed sockets, it's way easier to just pick something up and put it on while leveling. Yep. For new players, another really great advantage is that it's now impossible to socket a support gem into a skill gem that it doesn't work with. Ah. For example, this multiple projectiles gem can't be socketed into Leap Slam, but you can see with all the highlighted sockets that it will work with the other bow skills. Some of you will be wondering about skills like auras. A lot of the time in the old skill system, you'd throw a few gems together in a four link with few or no support gems. How can you do that when you have a limited number of active skill slots? The answer is meta gems. Meta gems are like super support gems that let you put multiple actives into them. For example, we want to run a few different auras on this character. We can put this proficiency gem into the character and load it up with auras. It even lets you bind a single key to enable all of the auras at once. That's so, oh man, like, <laughs> that is the most convenient thing I've ever heard in my life. Cast on crit are also meta gems. So this means you can put an entire cast on crit setup into one gem as one of your eight six links. One of the things we really wanted to improve in Path of Exile 2 was our lighting system. The new PBR rendering, in addition to a much more realistic light fall off, makes this area look significantly more awesome than what we Yeah, I definitely have to say, I think Path of Exile really shines with its lighting, and I was talking to someone about it earlier, and they were explaining how, because Path of Exile is so dark, you can really make the illumination of skills look so nice. Possibly achieve in the past.
I'm sad they didn't talk about an auto gem leveling. Yeah, they're like a hotkey to designate to gem level, but that's okay. Okay, I figured that's that's pretty much enough to look at from this. It looks super nice. I just want to go into the, I guess, the more refined details. So let me go pull that up. So. All right, let's go ahead and look at some of the 4.0 details and kind of call it cover them. So infograph on how you I'll leave that alone. Uh, new character page, which I think we saw. Oh, we didn't see in the video. Nice. This is super nice. I really like how simplified this is. Um, you've got your life, energy, shield, mana. That's kind of nice how they do that. Armor, evasion, block, dodge. Uh, your resistances. This is like done so nicely. No more like fucking looking at the number trying to see like where everything is. Uh, life, base, maximum life recovery, maximum total recovery, energy shield, night, and then there's even a little bit more. Perfect. That looks super cool. New campaign uh, will be set 20 years after the first. You know what's awesome? So, a little sidetrack here. I never really follow lore in games, and it's not that I follow, I don't follow lore because, like, I don't care about it. It's that I literally just don't remember because my brain doesn't want to focus on that aspect of the game. But one thing with Path of Exile is... Since the bosses have such a large part to play in terms of like what the community memes and hates on, you know, like, oh, Katava fucking boss phases, etc. You're just used to knowing the terms of bosses. So when uh, the trailer started for PoE 2 and it talks about it's been 20 years or whatever since the fall of Katava, immediately as a guy who plays Path of Eggs, I'm like, oh shit, like what the fuck, Katava's not here? That's just really cool. Isn't that kind of interesting? Like I don't ever pay attention to the lore, but it like makes sense. I guess because it's just such an easy thing to follow. Let's see, players can choose between new campaign and old campaign. Old campaign will still be supported and updated. We want to bring difficulty back into the campaign. Instances will have completely random generation two, no more consistent entrance exit patterns. Shape shifting, which we saw, which was really cool. Is this like a gif of it? Yeah, oh man. So, each shapeshift form can use any regular Path of Exile to attack. That makes sense. Here on the Werewolf, for example, we're using Leap Slam and Cleave. And one of the things that we thought was really important with shapeshifting is that you can change back and forth at literally any time, mid-animation, walking around in the middle of a skill, whatever, just hit the button and change forms. That's cool. They basically took like the blood and sand stance to an extent and like used that system how you can toggle it instantly. It's really good that they did the instant toggle, I think. Shapeshifting will prevent spell casting will replace your weapon. Shapeshift forms will have a weapon type, wolf scales with claws. There's at least one new ascendancy, or at least one new ascendancy related to shapeshifting with 19 ascendancies. There will be a new way to ascend and lab will appear not in a way you'd expect. Expect. Oh, there are new exiles from the PoE 2 campaign, each in the same genre of the old exiles, confirmed as additional ascendancies. Wait, what? There are new exiles from the PoE 2 campaign, confirmed as new additional ascendancies. Okay, ascendancies can uh, contain nodes similar to current ascendant, where you choose one of three options. Ranger ascendancies, survivalist, beastmaster, and tactician. Okay, survivalist. Ooh, what's this? Let's look. Uh, division. Gems socketed in your weapon grant two skills. One supported by GMP. <clears throat> the other supported by Barrage. Oh, God, that sounds so cool. Multiplication. Each second, your next projectile fires X amount of projectiles, stacking up to plus five. Vol burning arrow. <laughs> you will one-shot everything. I like this aspect here. Right here, you can choose between chaining 
piercing or forking. So I was saying way back in the day, way back in the day, like years ago when we were trying to get more customization with PoE, that I thought when skill gems hit like level 20, you could like pick some some minor aspect to them, but it seems like this is kind of cool because the ascendancies are sort of getting that, which is really nice. It's like instead of going to a completely different spot, you pick the same thing, you just pick between one of three. I think they also confirmed that respecking is so much cheaper now, it's like one regret orb for your ascendancy opposed to five. Spell avoidance grants the spell avoidance skill. While spell avoidance is active, your chance to dodge hits, uh, attack hits instead applies to your spell evasion. While spell avoidance is active, your evasion rating is converted to spell evade. This seems so crazy for certain bosses. And Chris confirmed that spells do not have accuracy. It's only for this specific mechanic where it actually comes into play. Lion Companion, uh, Panther Companion, and Cheetah Companion. Each one of these has a different buff revolving around it, which is super cool. Uh, companions definitely seem interesting. Ally of the Wild, Grand Summon Wild Cat. You have a wild cat aspect while your companion is active. Uh, born to the wild, or born, born to be wild, grants wear cat form skill 10% more damage while shape shifted. And then wild shape shift, wild shape. Increased buff effect for shape shift skills. Retain your, oh, this allows you to keep one buff on at all times, which is cool. So even if you're in like, so if you go from lion to regular, you'll still have lion. If you go from panther to cheetah, you'll still have panther while having cheetah. Either way though, this is just, you don't have to like theory craft this right now. It's a year plus from coming out, but it's just a really cool concept to be able to see into the future. And then I think I saw this on the Exalcon uh, video or the, uh, the live stream where they were talking about some new skills where ascendancies now give you more like new unique skills, which is cool because I think your ascendancy should play a, a big part in your build, at least how you decide to build around. Um, your totems and snare nearby enemies when placed. Your most recent placed ballista totem deals 100% more damage, has 100% more attack speed, and takes 50%. This is like pretty nuts. I, this seems pretty fucking cool, dude. Siege ballista totem. You may use a melee sword and axe skills with your bow. 10% more melee damage with bows and war mark plus one maximum flare arrows i like seeing like how much extra shit we're gonna have because it just seems so cool to have so many different things at the same time which ascendancies are canis defiler marauder doesn't say anything yet tbd ancestral synergies and buffs templar ascendancies shadow si okay this hasn't been released yet new socket system that we went over supports will be attached to the skills themselves gem or skill gem sockets will all be inherently linked skill gem sockets are modifiable six link fusing spam will turn into jeweler spam skill gems will be socketed in items still uh, meta gems are socketable supports that give or sorry socketed active gems example enlighten like support the, okay Totem supports will be meta gems and have unique AI for multiple active gems. Example, cur oh yeah, that's right. You can socket multiple gems into a spell totem and make it do multiple things, which just sounds also really cool. I don't know how, how good functionally, like how good it'll be in general, especially like with the way PoE works, but I think on like a boss fight, it would be pretty sick. You just place the totem down. It just does its rotation of shit. Significantly more like fixed attribute requirement. Wait, what? Um, so, you know, there's actually a lot of options for getting more sockets if you need them, uh, which we imagine will be the case for certain classes. Um, so, uh, you might have noticed that there's if there's only one socket on a helmet and strength helmets have red sockets and dex helmets have green sockets, then what does a strength dex helmet have? And the answer is a red green hybrid. So, cool. Um, I like that. That's good. That's for sure good. Tabula Ross will have three white sockets. Chess will normally have only two sockets of a certain color, so Tabula is not dead. Get out of here, Tabula Rasa. <laughs> we will have the ability to transfer experience from one gem to another. Possibly might be fixed only to another gem of the same skill. This is a cool idea, though, because since you now six link your gems, um, imagine like you're playing, usually this would be towards SSF or like early on into a league. You have like a level 19 fireball that's five linked or, or five socketed, I guess you could say, however you want to pronounce or say it. And then you open a strong box and a six link fireball drops. 
you could take the experience on your current fireball and give it to the level one, which will boost it back up the other one and you'll have a six link level 19 now. This is not really confirmed 100%, but I do like this idea for sure. Fusings are going to be 100% useless and may even be removed. Gem quality will increase the chance for six sockets and six socketing a gem will be much easier than current six link. Commentary and item decluttering. Okay, I don't think I actually saw this one. Let's take a look. And, you know, getting their, getting their additional item upgrades at the right speed. A, a thing that's important to understand for context is we have this decluttering project, which we haven't talked about a lot, which is basically just pairing Path of Exile items back and looking at how it all works overall, which has to be done before 400. And this is a lot of, like, we started work on this many months ago now. The basic idea is there's not so much random white trash that drops in the... White you know, trash? So many white items that drop in maps, right? Instead of 500 items on the ground where there's, you know, 20 rares, wouldn't it be better if there's, like, 80 items on the ground with, like, 10 good rares? And so we've got a lot of work we're doing on this, and that's why we're thinking about reward quite a lot recently, because we like the idea of you having to look at less things, but generally finding it more compelling. Because as you know right now, an item dropping on the ground is almost not worth looking at sometimes because you can just craft something so much better. So we're looking to find overall a better compromise where you're excited to craft, you're excited to find items, there's a lot less reading, you don't filter 99% of drops out. That's good. So on, that I'm, I'm extremely happy to hear this. Add to this if I've skipped anything. I'm really curious how exactly they're gonna do it though. Well, if, if this works out, what Chris is talking about, we will end up with a better system of allowing difficulty and reward correlation, um, which, so hopefully that all works on our end because it will produce. Can we get a hashtag happy feet in the comments for GGG Neon? Hopefully a better result. Um, this decluttering is not scheduled for 3 and I know we're still working on it. It's one of those dangerous things to release. And honestly, my major trepidation with releasing it is we can have it so, like we have it right now, that using the decluttering system, you're getting much better rare drops when they drop, right? You know, there's a lot of things we're doing there. We'll talk about it later. But there's still fewer, right? So in the old game, you kill some monster, 11 rares drop. You look at them and they're garbage. And under the new system, three rares drop. They're a lot better on paper. But you look at them and you think, huh, they're garbage. Because they weren't good for your character. And I don't want people saying, well, they just cut out three quarters of the drops and didn't make them better. And so that's what we're trying to achieve with that, is making sure that it's communicated well and that the items are actually more meaningful for the average player, as opposed to being better on paper because it rolled higher tiers of mods that still don't matter to your particular build, for right. example. So there's a lot of work that has to go into this, both on our end and in terms of like phrasing it correctly to the community when we eventually do roll it out, that it's a bit of a challenge and not scheduled for any particular expansion. But it will, I mean, this is a bit of a rant about decluttering. The performance improvements we will gain by not having an extra 600 rendered items on the ground with shadows, for example, 600 items that every frame on the client and on the server have to be ticked to see if there's anything going on with them. There's so many things that we get game-wide by having a more understandable set of fewer drops occurring that um, it's something we're very, very keen to roll out in the future. That's awesome and to hear. probably won't actually contain the final version or any of that necessarily, but we are thinking about this when we're looking at the reward um, with regard to how challenging the map content is. On the topic of clutter, is there anything planned for the amount of skill effects that can happen on oh. screen all at once during in-game content, especially? Look at his face. Look at his face. He's like, you're paying money for skill effects and you want us to reduce it? There's nothing currently planned. <laughs> but, of Just look at Chris's face. I agree with all of you and everyone. <laughs> we can all say there's just too much ruckus going on. Um, Too much ruckus. Fair to say. As for what to do about it, um, probably not for me to say, not even necessarily for Chris to say. This is a Jonathan yet. question. Yes, correct. So let's not answer it because he'll kill us. <laughs> All right. I think that pretty much concludes it. So I'm pretty excited for 4.0. I was completely blown away. You know, I, I didn't really even know what to expect. I had no clue what to expect from just the Exile Con stuff, but. Super excited for that. Got me very excited for three, like very excited for 3.9. So that's awesome. And we haven't even gotten like the league page yet for 3.9. We've just gotten the trailer and they've talked about it a bit, which is the Path of Exile Metamorph. So with that being said, I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, and especially on the 13th, which is going to be Path of Exile Metamorph. Have a good one, everybody.